r slash no sleep posted by you slash daddy moose we played hide and seek with the creature it finally found us this happened about seven years ago i live in a small town in quebec me and my three best friends have always been neighbors here and we're all basically family these days however things are a bit different i'll describe them so you can picture them in your mind for the sake of their families i'll be giving them fake names first up is john john is the oldest of the group and the tallest he is also the one with the best grades of the group and he's the most mature. Second is Caden, John's actual younger brother. He was very young at the time which also made him the most immature. Thirdly is Isaac, the leader of the group. He and I were equal in height but he was the strongest even stronger than John, who by the way was about 6 foot and 200 pounds and lastly was me, Mike. I was always the average kid, I was kind of strong not stronger than Isaac and John but strong. I was pretty fit and also the most antisocial of the group. At the time, John was 17, Isaac was 14, I was 14 and Caden was 12. This story takes off around the end of summer when school was about to start. During summer we would play chasse à l'homme to keep busy. It kind of became a hobby for us and we got very good at hiding. The rules are simple, it's basically hide and seek but there were two seekers and two hiders. There were no limits, since our town was so small we were allowed to hide literally anywhere in the whole town. We wouldn't play often at night but when we did we didn't play for long since we were scared. The teams were usually me and Isaac against Caden and John since they were brothers and that me and Isaac were so close. However, on the night of September 13, 2015, hide and seek was no longer an option for us. It was around 9.30pm when Isaac had the idea to play. John and Caden wanted to play as well but I was scared because it was getting dark outside. Come on Mike, we're all playing. It won't be the same without you playing with us said Isaac in a calming yet teasing tone. Fine I'll play as long as we play with our usual teams I said with slight hesitation. Caden let out a faint sigh and said no fair I want to be on Isaac's team. We liked being on Isaac's team because he always found the best hiding spots, but John never really cared which team he was on. Isaac walked over to Caden, patted him on the back and said in a warm voice next time buddy, next time. Alright then, let's go. Mike and I will count first and you guys go hide, you have 10 minutes Isaac yelled. John and Caden quickly started running towards town and Isaac and I counted at the corner between each of our houses. While counting, Isaac walked over to me with a wide grin. Bro I have an amazing spot for next round. Where? Don't worry you'll know it when you see it, he said as he smirked. Even though I was scared of the dark, I giggled in excitement trusting his plan. 10 minutes went by and it was time for me and Isaac to start searching for our friends. It's important to keep in mind John and Caden were a bit overweight so they didn't run fast and didn't fit in small spaces, which was used to our advantage. We reached the church in the center of the town and we decided to make a strategy. You go around the park to the fairgrounds and I'll go the other way around so we cover ground Isaac whispered. Hesitating, I said okay and I started running around the park and towards the fairgrounds. When I reached the fairgrounds, waiting for me was my three friends in a circle. I found them, Isaac said proudly. They were hiding underneath the stands. You wouldn't have found us if John didn't scream like a girl over a spider Caden yelled out of anger and disappointment. Shut up you little shit John said clearly annoyed. A smile grew on Isaac's face and he said our turn to go hide. Caden and John went back underneath the stands to go count. As soon as we heard John start to count Isaac told me to follow him as he bolted towards the other side of town. With nowhere else to go, I started running right behind him. We reached the other side of town and went down the bicycle trail leading to the woods. Where are going dude? I said in a scared voice. I found a place that they don't know about, he said giggling. When we got there, I froze. It was an abandoned cabin that looks straight out of a horror movie. There's absolutely no fucking way I'm going in there dude I yelled at Isaac. Annoyed, he yelled back oh my god, monsters aren't real Mike. Get it through your thick skull. In the back of my mind I didn't believe that but I knew I had to look brave in front of my best friend. Alright, alright. I'll come in with you, but you're going in first. With a big grin, Isaac walked into the cabin and I slowly followed behind him. Suddenly, Isaac froze. Dude what are you doing? I said confused. Still no word from Isaac. I walked up to him and froze in complete terror. It wasn't human. I don't think I can even call that. Thing in it. Standing in the darkest corner of the room was a tall, skinny, like to the bone skinny, 
shadowy figure with dark red eyes and white sharp teeth, with a huge disgusting smile that made the hair on the back of my neck stiffen. We were absolutely horrified. All of a sudden, it spoke in a deep, terrifying voice. Hello children. I see you've found me. Sorry for startling you, I just want to ask you something wa what? I said I know all about your little hide and seek game with Caden and John, I've been watching you kids play for a quite some time now. Isaac, clearly trying to be brave whimpered out so what's your question boogeyman? Speak to me like that again and IT will be the last words that come out of your mouth child. Isaac did not say a word after that. Now, let's play a game shall we? We are going to play hide and seek. The rules are as follows, you can hide anywhere in the world. If you are found you are eliminated. And if you are found you cannot run. Make sure to tell your friends about it, or don't. The game begins now. Right after, he vanished in thin air. Isaac and I bolted out of there and met with John and Caden who were at the elementary school looking for us. We told them what had happened but of course they didn't believe us. After an hour of arguing I decide to go home. The next few weeks that went by were pretty rough. Isaac and I didn't leave our houses because we were too paranoid he would find us. A few months went by and no sign that the creature was coming for us. That brings us to the present day, seven years later. Over the years, that night kind of faded from our minds and we never spoke about it. John and Caden both got jobs as welders up in Alberta and Isaac became a baseball coach for a high school up in Montreal. And I? Well I found the love of my life and I now have two kids. Life was fantastic. Until the beginning of this week. It was midnight when I received the call from Caden. John had been found dead Sunday night in his house. Apparently the scene was horrifying, but what was weird is what Caden told me on the phone. It found us man it found us, you were right. Whoa calm down Caden, what do you mean it foo I was immediately overwhelmed by fear and panic. I knew what Caden meant. Off oh, I whimpered. I have to go I'll call you later okay don't go anywhere alone, I said as I hung up the phone. I quickly woke up my wife and told her that she and the kids need to go to her parents for a while, for their own safety. What? What are talking about Mike? What did you do? Nothing sweetheart you just have to go please just trust me, it'll be okay. Mike seriously what did you just go? I yelled. She finally agreed and left with the kids. I called Isaac and told him everything and he believed me. I told him to be ready for whatever happens. On Tuesday, I received a call from Caden's parents telling me that Caden had gone missing and was wondering if I had seen him. I hung up the phone and broke down into tears. After a few hours of crying, I called Isaac and told him. He didn't even say a word, he just hung up the phone. I was completely torn apart. That same night Isaac called me back and told me that he couldn't live in fear anymore, and he shot himself, still on the phone with me. I couldn't take it anymore. I walked over to my gun cabinet and pulled out my pistol, loaded it and put it to my head. I couldn't do it though. The thought of my wife and kids kept me from doing it. But, I had also accepted my fate, and awaited for the Grim Reaper to find me. It is now Saturday, 9.30 PM. Honey if you're reading this, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there for the rest of the kids' birthdays. I wish we had more time together, but I just heard a faint scratch at the door, and I think I know who, or more accurately what it is, 